In life, people want to get it. Can you get it? Is it possible to get? So you mean beyond an awareness of sensory input, there is an intellectual piece of information that's going to make it all snap into place. Snap into place where exactly? Oh, in your mind? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You don't ever get it. Even if you say, well, I get it by not getting it. That's not getting it. That's just being okay with ambiguity in the uncertainty of ambiguity. You get it. Well, first and foremost, you should know that there's nothing to get. Literally and figuratively. But you see, what ends up happening is that these so-called people begin to grasp on to things, forming identifications and associations. And this inevitably leads to the so-called person to begin thinking that there is something to get. And by thinking that there is something to get, they forget that there is nothing to get. And just like that, they are not getting it. And of course, when one is not getting it by forgetting that there is nothing to get, this leaves no other choice but to think that the way to get it is by forming even more identifications and associations, sinking deeper and deeper into delusion, by grasping onto and sifting through the ever more increasing details of inventory. And this is why you should know up front, I am not here to teach anything. And you should not be seeking out my videos with some idea that you're gonna learn. Nah, 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 nah. Not so fast there, Charlie. Not so fast. Straight up, I am an un-teacher. Here to show the ways of unlearning. And nothing more. But of course, people don't know what to make of that. And a multitude of knee-jerk reactions quickly ensue. Oh, Sage. You are here to just brainwash us into an ideology of nothingness. No. The brainwashing is already your default. Unlearning the bullshit is the way out of that nonsense. Brainwashing is attachment to identifications and associations of awareness. Clinging to patterns and conditions. I am here to break down all those aspects. So how would that qualify as brainwashing? You are already conditioned. I'm not asking you to switch to an alternative conditioning. I am asking you to discard all conditioning. And my request of this is not a conditional demand. It is an unconditional suggestion. You have the option to reject it without consequence. I love you no matter what. 
and you are free to do as you please. I am only offering my services because there are people out there that are seeking to get it. And all they are really doing is blindly stumbling around in the dark, chasing after a label they can call the truth in order to find security and comfort in the darkness. So trust me, I understand the rejection and don't hold it against you. And as for trying to better clarify the getting it, here's a little Zen story that might lend some insight. And it goes a little something like this. There once were two monks who lived in the woods. One was committed to sitting under a particular tree forever until he achieved enlightenment. He sat there under the tree, eating only the bugs and spiders and lizards that happened to wander close enough. He drank only the water that fell when it rained. There were cobwebs hanging off of him and he was dirty and smelly. Not a pleasant aesthetic experience. Then there was a second monk who lived in the same woods, who traveled around the woods and had a lot of fun, who occasionally went into town and got himself into a little bit of difficulty now and then. He did have a weakness for rice wine. As chance would have it, a messenger of Brahma happened to be passing through. Now the tradition was that if you could recognize the messenger, you got to ask a question. The monk under the tree recognized the messenger, and he said, Ha! There! I see you, messenger of Brahma. I claim the answer to my question. The messenger said, oh, all right, what's your question? How many more lifetimes must I sit under this tree meditating before I experience enlightenment? Well, said the messenger, I'll go ask Brahma and come back when I'm next this way and give you the answer. Overhearing this, the second monk said, hey, I'd kind of like to know the answer to that too. That would be interesting to know. Years pass. And as chance would have it, the messenger again came back through, and the now old men recognized him. The old monk under the tree said, Ha! I recognize you, messenger. Have you brought my answer from Brahma? The messenger said, Yes. Brahma says you've got four more lifetimes before you finally achieve enlightenment. The old monk under the tree said, Ah, shit. Four more lifetimes of sitting under this damn tree, among the spiders and the lizards and the muck and the rain. Yuck. Awful. The second monk said, Well, how about me? The messenger said, Brahma said you have 10,000 more lifetimes before you finally get it. The monk said, 10,000 more lifetimes before enlightenment? Incredible! 10,000 more lifetimes enjoying this incredible world we live in? Enjoying these woods. Enjoying being alive. The messenger said, No, no, no. You're there already. The end. No moral to the story, folks. Would it shock you to know that you were once enlightened? 
that you were once an awakened being, and that through years of conditioning, it all got buried. Do you remember when you were a small child? You were enlightened. You had it. You were fully awake. Your world was magical, a place full of wonder and mystery. And then along came the adults that ruined everything. Yeah, most adults can be fucked up. But we won't judge them harshly. Adults are a product of a demented society. And that sickness inevitably passes through the adult and gets instilled in the child. Let's not forget that these adults were once children too. And the same sickness was passed and instilled into them by their parents. And sometimes it can be very ugly. Often, even before a child even begins to attend school, if they attend school, they are subjected to untold horrors of abuse, neglect, poverty, malnutrition, molestation, and rape. Some kids are already marred by the time they enter preschool or kindergarten. And of course, once school begins, the overall indoctrination process begins. And for the next 18 plus years, they are continually hammered by ideology, theology, knowledge, truth, fact, laws, morals, ethics, scruples, values, meanings, purposes, narratives, beliefs, and social expectations. They are taught to be competitive, materialistic, and self-interested. And at the end, they are handed a diploma, which, in effect, is the death certificate of the child that once was. And even if they drop out, the harsh reality of the streets will kill that child. Either way, no matter how you slice it, that child dies. Enlightenment is gone. And the sickness sets in. A sickness that gets further compounded by an idea that the way to be normal is to adjust to the sickness. Those that are lucky and survive all this madness might reach a point in their lives where they want to shake off the sickness. This usually manifests as a spiritual interest. But unfortunately, most of these people get sucked into the jaws of religion. If they were not already inducted into it previously, in which case they are pretty much a lost cause. And of, of course, for your average human being, religion makes sense due to their conditioning. A conditioning that dictates that the navigational default is learning, conforming, absorbing, imitating, and believing that some kind of spiritual progress can be measured by how well one strives to uphold tradition, routine, ritual, 
and the memorization of dogma. In other words, in order for me to be complete, something more must be added. And then it's pretty much game over. The thinking mind has completely taken over, and the awareness has associated an identity with the thinking process. One will be very hard-pressed to deconstruct this. But let's give it a try. First and foremost, you should know that you are nothingness. What is nothingness? Whatever you think that nothingness is, that's not it. It's not a state of being. It is not existence or non-existence. But suffice it to say that within nothingness, sparks of manifestation flash in and out of being. Now, this has led some people into thinking that nothingness and somethingness are one and the same, that they are two sides to one coin, and cannot be independent of one another. This stems from attachments to somethingness, the need for familiarity and personalization. But it's kind of like saying that objects need empty space an empty space also needs objects. No. We can have empty space without an object, but we cannot have an object without empty space. And while true that anything that manifests from nothingness is not separate from nothingness, the nothingness, however, does not rely on its manifestations for its own eternal nothingness. Nothingness can remain unmanifested. It can remain in what we're calling long states of unmanifestation, even though there is no state or time to it. Now, metaphorically speaking, when a spark of manifestation flashes into being. This can be likened to nothingness becoming aware of itself, which in itself is a paradoxical absurdity, considering there are no divisions within an eternal whole of nothing. But nevertheless, nothingness becomes self-aware Hence, an illusion of division is created. There is an awareness, and therefore something to be aware of. Now, if you really need something to form an identity with, then awareness is your best bet. It's the primary substance the substance that all substances are composed of. Now you see how easy you can lose sight of this. You already know this as a child without knowing it. Then forget what you knew without knowing by starting to know things. For example, Imagine for a minute that you are a floating ball of awareness in empty space. It's pretty clear what you are, no? Now, let's put this ball of awareness into a body. A body endowed with a gender, race, sexuality, and a narrating thinking mind. Hmm, identifiers. Now it's not so clear. Perhaps we are not awareness and are instead these characteristics. 
Now let's put this physical body into an environment. Hmm. Now it's even less clear. Perhaps we are not awareness, but are a physical creature from a world. Now let's add other beings to the mix. Awareness now certainly has a lot to focus on, doesn't it? And of course, these other beings begin to tell you that thou art this and thou art that. That your source can be found somewhere in the external, whether physical or metaphysical. You are either the product of external materials or an external god, or maybe a combination of both. But in any case, the place to seek is out there. Is it any wonder why the child you once were is dead? Could this child ever be resurrected? Perhaps. But to do so, you must unlearn what you have learned. Thou art not this, and thou art not that. You are not your thoughts. You are not from a world. You are not a physical being. You are aware of these things, but none of them define what you really are. You've only attached to these things to solidify an identity, the non-existent ego. You know, it's okay to let it all go. Letting go is really easy. Holding on is hard. Letting go only seems hard when you are holding on real hard. If you want to restore the child you once were, then let go. Detach. Unidentify. Disassociate. Unlearn. Deconstruct. Subtract. Reduce. Empty. The magic and mystery will return. Your imagination will heal. Don't think about it. Create some space within yourself, and creativity will flow through you naturally. And then you can use thinking as a supplemental tool, as opposed to a self-imposed dictator. Living this way is living the experience of enlightenment. It's not found anywhere else. Deep realizations in meditation is not enlightenment. Coming back from those realizations and living a rejuvenated life is the enlightenment. Introspectively merging with the nothingness isn't enlightenment. There is no experience in nothingness, much less enlightenment or delusion. Spring out of nothingness and temporarily illuminate it without attachment. That is enlightenment. Remembering the nothingness can help you. 
There's nothing to fight over. If we all agree on nothingness, then what's the problem? Forget God. Forget ideology, theology, knowledge, philosophy, spirituality, and wisdom. The innocent child within you doesn't need these things to live. Sure, let's play with them. Let's not fight over them. Perform a puppet show. Watch a puppet show. But don't invest in a puppet show. Perhaps you are afraid to be a child. Well, don't associate innocence with weakness. Take it from me. I ain't nothing but a 43-year-old boy. And I wouldn't have it any other way. And believe me, when I die, I will go to the grave as a very old boy.